This lesson deals with Supplemental Problem 414. You can find this problem in the ECE 201 ebook in the Chapter 4 Supplemental Problem starting on page 15. The circuit shown at the bottom of this page is called a bridge amplifier. It's an op-amp configuration whose output is proportional to a change in resistance. We'd use this kind of circuit with what's called a strain gauge. A strain gauge is a metal foil or a wire bonded to a plastic sheet. The sheet is cemented to an object that's usually under stress. So as the length of the foil or the wire increases, its resistance increases proportionally. But these are very, very small changes. So we need an amplifier to be able to detect the change. Suppose this is our strain gauge or our change in resistance. And we're going to model this as, let's say, R3 times 1 plus delta, where delta is a very, very small number compared to 1. If you pick this resistor to be equal to the parallel combination of R1 and R2, then the output voltage has a very nice, simple formula. It's 1 plus R2 over R1 times the reference voltage here divided by 2 times this change in resistance. So we now have a proportionality with the change in resistance. So we can pick this to be a large enough number so that we could detect the voltage. Let's analyze the circuit. Now there is nothing here that we've seen before, so we'll have to go back to our basics of Kirchhoff's voltage and current law. So let's label the voltage across the op-amp. I've got feedback here, so it's driven to zero. No current entering or leaving. Show that in either direction because it's equal to zero. Now how many nodes do we have in the circuit? Well, I've got one node, two nodes, three nodes, four nodes with respect to ground. But I do know this voltage, V sub R, and I also know that whatever the voltage V1 is, it's the same as V3 because there's a difference of zero. So although there's four node voltages here, there's really like two unknowns. So I want to sum the currents at a node where I don't have any voltage sources. So this node, don't want to do it here because I'll pick up the unknown of the current in this battery. And likewise over here with the op amp, I don't know the current going into or out of the op amp. I can solve for it, but I don't want another unknown. So let's sum the currents at node one and at node three. I let all the currents lead the node here, but that's an arbitrary decision. But once you pick it, just write Kirchhoff's current laws based on that. So the current leaving the node here would be the voltage V1 divided by R1, or times G1. The current in this parallel combination would be node voltage 1 minus node voltage 2, which is equal to V sub R. And then R1 in parallel with R2 would just be the sum of the conductance reciprocal. So dividing by that resistance in parallel would be the same as multiplying by G1 plus G2. And lastly, the current going in this direction is going to be equal to the current that's in this resistor, because nothing goes here. So this current is the same as this one. So it's going to be this node voltage, V1, minus V0, which is our output, divided by R2 or times G2. I can group all this stuff together here that multiplies V1. That's going to be G1, G1 again, G2, and another G2. All the things that multiply V sub R here are G1 plus G2, but there's a minus sign. And likewise, the things that multiply V out, I've got a minus sign, that's just G2. So I have one equation and my two unknowns, V1 and V out. Let's sum the currents at node 3. Again, I let them all leave the nodes so that their summation would be equal to zero. The current in the resistor R3 would be V3 minus V2, which is V sub R, divided by R3, or times G3. And then the current here would just be V3 minus zero, divided by R3 times 1 plus delta. But you could write 1 over R3 as G3. Here's my second equation and my two unknowns. Uh, G3 is common, so let's cancel that. I've got V3 times 1. I've got V3 times 1 over 1 plus delta. And I've got just minus V sub R. I'll put that on your side of the equation. So a common denominator here would be 1 plus delta. So I'd have 1 plus delta plus 1, so that'd be 2 plus delta. Now let's put that on the other side of the equation. So I'll make the numerator the denominator, and the denominator the numerator. Put the value now of V3 in terms of the reference voltage and the change in resistance. But that's also equal to V1. Then go back and substitute this into here. So I've got the voltage V sub R times 1 plus delta over 2 plus delta. And that's going to multiply 2G1 plus 2G2. So here's that term. And then I've got minus V sub R. So here's my V sub R in front. And I've got G1 plus G2. And then I've got V out times G2. I'll put that on the other side of the equation. Let's divide by G2. So I've got my V sub R here. And I could pull out the G1 plus G2. I have a 2 left over. That would multiply 1 plus delta. So here's my 2 multiplied by the 1 plus delta, so I get 2 plus 2 delta. And then I have a minus 1 here. Bring the G2 inside here, so I'd get a G1 over G2, and then a 1. Find a common denominator here, which would be 2 plus delta. So I'd have 2 plus delta, and then minus the quantity 2 plus delta, which would be minus 2 minus delta. And I get some terms canceling here. I get the 2's canceling. And I lose one of the deltas. I could write this as R2 over R1. And then here I've got 2 delta minus delta, which is delta, over 2 plus delta. Now remember, delta is a very, very small 
number, much, much less than one. We added one to that to multiply that by our sensing resistor R3. So when you have no change in resistance, delta would be zero and just have a value of R3. And then as the resistance changes, as you're pulling on those strain gauges, you in increase the resistance and you can then detect the value. When you add two to a number that's much, much less than one, it's approximately two. So you could throw this term roughly out. This is something we do in electronics all the time, and that is to, to make approximations. So then I have one plus R2 over R1 times V sub R over two times delta. And that was the equation we had on the previous page. And this is supplemental problem 414.